Hi and welcome to 3D4 set reconstruction and modeling tutorial. This video demonstrates how to reconstruct a set with the use of an image sequence by creating 3D models from reconstructed points and manipulating these points and models within 3D space. Furthermore, single objects of the scene will be reconstructed by modeling. Ok, for doing this, we will track scene SDA, which can be found in the tutorials folder. At first, we need some features tracked within the scene. We can track features like the markers manually, but for this case, it is more convenient to use the auto tracker. So, let's switch to auto tracking controls and within camera attributes, increase the amount of active points per frame. Next, click on auto and track. Alright, we have plenty of features tracked, let's have a look at them. Select all points and go through the sequence. We can see some points are tracked very badly, therefore it should be deleted before we're moving on to calculating the project. But finding and selecting them by hand could take a long time, so let's select calc, find badly tracked points. The default settings suit good for us, so OK. And some points were selected. Let's have a quick look at them. Yeah, these points have nothing to do in our project, so let's delete them. Ok, one thing left to do before we calculate is setting a correct film back size. We have knowledge which camera was used shooting this footage, so within lens attributes, let's set parameter film back height to 1.48 cm. Perfect, time to calculate our project. Calc, calc all from scratch, and here we go, point positions and camera path were calculated. Ah, uh, the deviation doesn't look very great and there seem to be some badly tracked points left, according to their deviation curve. Let's select them to check their tracking quality. As they're obviously wrong, so let's delete points with these high peaks in their deviation curves as well. Ok, calc again. Yeah, deviation improved, so we can go on creating 3D models. In the next steps, we are going to learn techniques how to reconstruct the wall in the back. To start, we have to switch to 3D orientation controls. We can see the camera path, which looks correct, as well as the diffuse point cloud. After rotating around this cloud a bit, we can recognize elements of the set, but especially the curved wall seems to be reconstructed quite good. So, time to create a 3D model out of the point cloud, which can be done quite easy in 3D Equalizer 4. Simply select all points and deselect those not belonging to the wall. Then let's click on menu, 3D models, create, mesh from points. The appearing requester includes just one slider to filter outlier points. The lower the value is, the more will the mesh be created according to the exact point positions. The higher the value, the more will the mesh differ from some points but a value of 0.5 suits good for our project. Ok, and we created a 3D wall out of the point cloud. Let's have a closer look. Rotating around the mesh, we notice some polygons which belong more to the floor than to the wall. We should remove them. For removing polygons, simply click on button Remove Poly. Now by clicking on a polygon, it will be removed from the mesh. Please note that polygons and lines are separated within the mesh, so we have to delete each of them individually. This one too. Perfect. All remaining polygons now belong to the wall. 
Okay, now we have a mesh reconstructing the wall within the footage. But how good is the reconstruction quality? Based on the model, which can be seen within 3D orientation controls, it is hard to check this very precisely. Okay, we can see basically the mesh has the form we would suggest after seeing the footage. But how can we check if it fits at every point? The footage mapped on the mesh instead of being displayed by an image plane in the background would be a good help. Tracking errors are amplified this way and are easier to identify, so we can immediately see if footage and 3D points are matching. To do this, within 3D model attributes, we activate toggle button Map Footage on Polygons. The current frame of the footage is now displayed on the mesh. Let's go through the sequence. Uh, the yellow lines as well as the image plane in the background are a bit disturbing, so let's correct this. Lower the alpha value for a better visibility of the footage. And hide the image plane by selecting View, Show Image Planes. None. Perfect. Again, let's go through the sequence. The footage moves along the mesh and at first sight, the result isn't very bad. The tables and monitors deformation can be ignored here, since this is a reconstruction of the wall and these objects are clearly positioned way before it. So it's absolutely normal, they aren't displayed correctly in this case. Let's concentrate on points placed on the wall, especially at points in the mesh corner. It's better to set a shorter frame range to prevent the black areas in this part of the mesh. So let's have a closer look at the reconstructed points. We can see the footage is moving quite much. Ideally, of course, it should be static throughout the sequence. So, how do we achieve this? Since the footage's movement is much higher at the edge of the mesh than in the middle, wrong lens distortion might cause this problem. Therefore, the next step is calculating lens distortion. Let's select Tab Lens and add parameter Focal Length and Distortion Degree 2 to the calculation process. Next, open the parameter adjustment window, set Adaptive All and hit button Adjust. The calculation process started. Now we have to wait a bit for the results. Transfer parameters and everything's transferred to our lens. Rotate around the mesh for having a better look at what happens to it when we calculate the project again. Calc all from scratch. And as we could see, 3D points and the mesh were modified after we used the results of the calculation process. The mesh is always linked dynamically to the 3D points, so if the points are modified, the mesh will be modified as well according to the new point positions in 3D space. Okay, let's have a look at the result. The deviation was improved so far, and the footage's movement on the mesh was reduced pretty much at the point positions. The footage is now static at the point as we want it to have. Let's compare this result to the previous one by displaying again the distorted footage. We uncheck toggle button View, Footage, Undistort. And the footage on the mesh is back to rock and roll. Scrubbing through the sequence, let us see the movement again. Undistort again. And we see the quality really improved very much. So. The footage is now quite static at the point positions in the mesh corner. Let's have a look at the entire mesh. Most parts of the wall were reconstructed quite good, but there are some polygons which do not seem very correct. Let's zoom to such an area. The image is far away from being static at this point, so rotate around it to find out why. We clearly see 
a false reconstructed 3D point causes the error. In this case, this outlier point is positioned too far away from the wall. Fixing this point might be simply translating it backwards to its correct position. But all transformation controls are disabled, as we can see after selecting the point with toggle button transform activated. The solution here is the small button locked at the bottom of the display area. So what does this button do? Very simple, it makes all objects within 3D orientation controls editable. Let me demonstrate this quickly. In locked mode, we are only able to transform all objects together, which means even if a single object like the camera is selected, we basically transform the C node instead of the camera individually. In unlocked mode, all manipulations are applied on the currently selected objects alone. So we can transform the camera, the entire or parts of the camera path, as well as single objects separately. Okay, looks we messed up our scene pretty much. Let's calc the project again to repair this disaster. Perfect. Back to our badly reconstructed friend on the wall to bring it to its correct position. Let's select the point, deselect the mesh and adjust the point position. Doing this while playbacking the footage will be much easier since the result of the modification can be seen live while translating the point. We see, moving the point backwards leads to a lower movement of the footage. Ah, uh, that was too far backwards. Here we go. It seems correct now. Not that bad for manual positioning. So, let's have a look at the mesh again. We see the footage is quite static at the reconstructed points. But between the points, the footage still moves a bit. This depends on the point density on the mesh. In areas with a lot of points, the curved wall can be reconstructed very precisely. Areas with the low density, therefore, cause inaccuracies within these areas since the lines between the points aren't curved like the wall. The solution of the problem is increasing the point density, so we have to create more points. This can be done using script subdivide, which can be found in the display area. As the label indicates, it subdivides a line between two points. So let's select two points, as well as the mesh, and click on button subdivide. Here we go, a new 3D point was created in the middle of the two previously selected points. In addition, this point is already pre-selected. The next steps are the same as we've done before, translating the point until it fits. But translating in that direction isn't the only direction we are able to move the point. If there is a specific feature within the model we like to reconstruct, we can use axis X and Y as well to position our point exactly where we want it to be. Well, we positioned a new 3D point manually and the result is already not that bad but the point would fit better if it would have tracking information. So let's add this. With the point still selected, let's switch to manual tracking controls. Activate toggle button 3D distortion to display all 3D points. And we see our new point is even selected here. So let's start tracking this point in the first frame. Instead of creating a keyframe manually, we try to get the projected 2D point position of 3D point by using a script. Let's select menu item edit, real in points current frame, and a keyframe was created. Adjust the tracking area a bit, and track this point. Perfect. Usually the next step would be to calculate the project. But there's a good reason for not doing this in this case and in this step. Using script triangulate points within menu calc instead of calc all from scratch calculates the currently selected points alone and is therefore much faster 
and leaves all previously calculated or manually manipulated points untouched. Since we have such a manually translated point in our project, this script is perfect for us in this specific case. Please note that this script really just triangulates this point, forgetting its 3D position. This point won't have any influence on other points or the camera path, therefore it is set to passive, which can be seen in the object browser. To use this point for enhancing the overall reconstruction quality, please calc the project from scratch. Ok, let's switch to 3D orientation controls before running the script for having a better look at the results. Here we have our point, which we like to triangulate. Keep the current position in mind, then select Calc, Triangulate Points. Et voila, the 3D point was modified. Let's check it. Yes, it's reconstructed way better than our manual attempt. Perfect, the wall looks quite good right now. Of course, there are still some areas not fitting perfectly, but this can be corrected with all the methods and tools we've seen in the last steps. After reconstructing the wall, we will now try to reconstruct a single object of the footage, like the blue box. So, at first, we should create a 3D model which is similar to the blue box. I think a cube will be a good choice. Next, map footage on the cube to texture it. Now we have a cube with map footage in 3D space, but it is obviously positioned very wrong and the size is way too big as well. At first, how do we find out where to place this cube in 3D space? We can try to do this all manually, but this will take a lot of time. So in the footage, let's track a feature on the blue box, calc this point and snap the cube to the reconstructed 3D point. For doing this, switch to manual tracking controls. The marker in the middle of the box is ideal for our purpose. So let's create a new 2D point, change the tracking mode to marker, adjust the tracking area and start tracking. Looks good, so back to 3 orientation controls. And with the points still selected, run again script triangulate points. Here we go, the point appears in 3D space. Next we have to snap the cube to the point. Since the middle of the cube's bottom polygon was snapped to the point, and we tracked a feature in the middle of the blue box, we just need to rotate the box by 90 degrees for getting the correct position in 3D space. Perfect, when we play back the footage, we see we are on the right way, but there is still something to do to reconstruct it perfectly. At first, let's adjust the size a bit. The footage is still moving a lot on the cube, which might be caused by wrong rotation parameters. So, let's rotate the cube. It's getting better. Some more fine tuning. Well, seems to fit now. Very good, considering we adjusted the cube that fast. Okay, we learned how to reconstruct elements of a scene by using the auto tracker and creating a mesh object which was modified to enhance the reconstruction quality. Further, single objects of that scene were modeled as well using 3D models provided by 3D Equalizer 4. Well, that's it. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial.